Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. You know what today is? It's hump day. <laughs> it is Wednesday. Let's get over this hump today. You are on the Dominion Devotionals with yours truly, Pastor Hosea of CBC of Hawthorne, California. California. We're going to dive into the Word of God on this morning, our daily scripture reading on the subject of dominion. See what we can glean from the text. God always has much to say, and we want to hear everything he has to say. So we're going to dive in right here momentarily with our daily scripture reading for this morning. And let's just see what God wants to minister to us. But first and foremost, you do know what today is. Just in case you did not know what this day is, allow me to remind you. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Glad in it, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, it is. It is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you, most gracious Heavenly Father, for being so good to us. For Father God, allowing your minister and angels to be kept round about us, that no hurt, harm, or danger will come near our dwelling, keeping us safe as we slumber and slept all night long. We thank you, Father, for protection. We thank you for divine grace. Thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you for new mercies this morning, for your mercy endureth forever. Thank you for your goodness, your loving kindness toward us. When we weren't ready to die, we weren't fit to live. You sent your only begotten, begotten son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died for us. And for that alone, we are forever grateful. And not only did he die, but that he rose from the dead with all power of heaven and earth in his hand. He did it for our justification, that we might have the right to the tree of life and be able to operate in the dominion you've ordained for us from our creation. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. For you alone are worthy of all of our praise and all of our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? Amen. All right, who do we have on the line? DJ, please pick up the phone. I'm on the request line. If you are under 40, you have no idea what I just said. <laughs> God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Vincent Covington, Sister Cheryl Bailey, Brother Dice, Sister Keisha. Good morning, Sister Yolanda, Sister Talisha. My man, William, bless you, brother. Sister Linda, Sister Lawanda, Sister Karen Lewis. 
Sister Kendall, Preston, Siggy, Mowo, Latoya Jones, Brother Demetrius, bless you, man. God bless you, Sister Sharice Jackson. Praise God for you. Thank God for you all. We're diving in this morning, picking up on our Dominion series of these Dominion devotionals. Bless you, Brother Matthew. We're picking up right here. Let me see. Let me get that word to stay up. There we are. And today's scripture reading will be coming from, you know, I'm going to start posting this. Today's scripture reading will be coming from Romans 8, verses 5 through 8. Today's scripture reading. So just in case somebody join us late, they'll know where we are. Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 8. Romans chapter 8, verse number 5, reads as follows. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. No, I wanted to stop there. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's verse number eight. Okay. Now we're talking this week about Kingdom mentality, or you could also say a dominion mentality. It's about being dominion conscious. Kingdom mentality. Your mindset will determine your results and outcomes in life more than anything else. God deals with our mind throughout the scripture. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He says, think on things above, not things below or beneath. He wants control of our mind. He says, be transformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So when you talk about mindset, if you're going to enjoy a life of dominion, life in the kingdom, you must have the mentality of the kingdom, of dominion. And I want you to see through these verses how critical our mindfulness is to our results in life. Look at what he says. He says, for they that are after the flesh do mind, M-I-N-D, the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, they mind the things of the spirit. Your mentality, your mindset has so much to do with your actions, your behavior, your habits. Oftentimes we want to preach you. I mean, I'm trying to live right, but it's hard. I don't know how to stop doing what I'm doing. I'm trying to serve God righteously, but I don't know how to do it. When you try to attack your behavior just from the outside, you're more likely to not have <clears throat> great long-lasting results. 
Now, yeah, there are things you have to do on the outside, but if nothing on the inside changes in your mindset, then it's going to be hard to change what's happening on the outside because actions are the reflection of thought. Without a thought, there is no act. I mean, let's look at this bi biologically, right? Just, I'm going to drink some of this water. Do you know my mind, <clears throat> my brain had to send the signal to my body to grab this and drink it? It doesn't just happen without that cooperation. My brain sends signals and my body responds. Govern your thoughts because your thoughts become your words. Watch your words because your words become your actions. Beware of your actions because your actions become your habits. Take heed of your habits because your habits become your character. And ultimately, your character becomes your destiny. You see that order? Where did it start? Your thoughts. <clears throat> those that walk after the flesh, those that yield to their fleshly desires, to their ungodly desires, to their sinful tendencies. The Bible says they are those that mind the things of the flesh. If it's always on my mind, it's going to always continue in my life. If I can switch it here, I can switch it out here. But those that mind the things, those that walk after the spirit, they mind the things of the spirit. Watch this now. Let's go a little deeper. <clears throat> For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. The word carnal means fleshly. To be fleshly minded leads to death. <clears throat> I'm tired of having negative situations in my life. I'm tired of my finance. My finance is always in trouble. I'm tired of my family always in an uproar. I'm tired of already having problems on my job. I'm tired of this. Check to see whether or not you're being cornerly minded. What do you mean? Do you get up going to work like, ooh, I ain't got time for this today. I'm telling you, they better not say nothing to me today. I ain't for it. Uh, and so and so, she better not to come looking at me crazy today because I'm, I'm liable to pop in the mouth. And when woo, 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 I'm just, you know, I'm about sick and tired of this job anyway. Like, I, I don't really want to be here. Like, I didn't find me something else. I'm, if that's your attitude and your mindset, while you on your way to work, you ain't even got to work yet. <laughs> that's being very cornerly minded and it leads to death. Death's not always physical. It leads to death in your, in your peace. Death to your joy. Death to what would have been a good day. That ends up being a horrible day. And we think it just happened because it happened. We don't even see the, con the contribution we made. See, here, here's the thing. Let me get deeper with dominion. Because you have dominion on this planet, <clears throat> everything you think, speak, and do has an actual impact on your environment. Oh, I need you to catch this. Everything you do, everything you say, everything you think in your heart, your disposition, your attitude, the way you move, your persona, your personality, it affects things out here in this world because God gave you dominion. Everything is plugged into you. See, we're going to dig into that deeper as we get further into this thing, into this series. When you want your life to change, there have to first be changes made in you. <laughs> changes are made in you, and it starts here. 
Get rid of your stinking thinking. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Think about a situation that's not the way you want it to be in your life. Ask yourself, how do you think about that situation? I bet you both of them are in agreement. <laughs> the way you think about it and the way it is, I bet they agree. You think you think about it that way because it is that way, but is it possible that it remains that way because you only think about it that way? Oh, I'm teaching better than you listening right now. I need you to catch this. To be carnally minded is death. To be fleshly minded. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Watch the same scenario. Now I'm on my way to work. Ooh, you know what, Father? I'm grateful for this job. I'm glad that you've given. A lot of people wish they had a job right now with what's going on in this world we live in today. And Lord God, I know sometimes the people I'm around are challenging, but I'm thankful for them. Because through them being challenging, I know you're developing more character in me. And Father God, I'm believing you and I'm asking you to use me to have an impact on their life that would draw them closer to you. Lord God, help me to be one that helps so-and-so not be so hateful. Show me how I can deal with them in a way that might provoke a better attitude in them. Give me the words to say to so-and-so that might help them. Father, I thank you because if you put me in such a challenging environment, that means you put something in me that's greater than what's outside of me. And use what you put in me to affect what's happening outside of me. I want that job to be better because I am there and you are in me. So I thank you, Father, because everything you do has a reason and a purpose. And I'm grateful for the challenge because you're only elevating me through this to take me higher. If you go to that same job with that attitude, that's how you get different results. Because to be spiritually minded is life and peace. <laughs> life and peace. To be carnally minded is just death, period. But when you're spiritually minded, it brings about better life and peace. If you're not enjoying your life and you don't have no peace, check your mindset. The Bible says, and it tells us why to be carnally minded is death and to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The next verse says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. What's this? What's this? Your corner mind is enmity with God. Enmity, irreconcilable hostility. That's what enmity is. When you have the corner mind, it will never yield to God. It will never embrace God's way of doing it. It will always want to deal with it fleshly, which is rebelliously, which is sinfully, which is evil. Always. Because it's not even subject to the law of God. The corner mind ain't thinking about doing it God's way. That's why we can't allow ourselves to dwell in that. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. See, we talk about the flesh. The flesh, if I'm going to break it all the way down to you, the flesh is a mindset. <laughs> to be in the flesh is to be in a mindset or a mentality that's against God's way. To flesh is to be yielding to your negative feelings, your negative emotions, your anger, your, you know, it, 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 it's, it's not yielded to the way of God. Like, for instance, God's way would say, turn the other cheek. Do good to them that despitefully misuse you. Bless them that curse you. All of these things. But the flesh, when you're in the flesh, I wish I would. I'm going to wait till I see her. I'm, that's the flesh. And it's totally contradicting what God said. We all get there. I, I, I know you're going to get there. I, get, I got there this morning. Let me say true story this morning. A brother texted me this morning. I'm going to read it verbatim. Brother texted me this morning. This is a true story. This just happened. 
I was getting in my car, headed to work, and my brother texted me, good morning, Pastor. I know you're always feeding everybody else, so I want to feed into you. May nothing but peace and blessings flow on you today. Enjoy your day. Allow nothing and no one to ruin it. Now watch this. I saw he text me. You know, you see the text, and you can see the top of the text. And I saw the top where it says, "Good morning, Pastor. I know you're feeding everybody else." I'm like, "Okay, you probably got an encouraging word for me." I read it in a little while. So I saw the text because I'm rushing. I'm trying to hurry up and get out of the house to get to work. So I saw it, but I didn't open the text. Right? I saw it, and I've got my phone. Ooh. I got right where you pull in, pulling into the church. And the trash truck is in the right lane blocking the flow of traffic. So I got to go around him. So as I pull in, and the gate to the church is right there on the left. I'm pulling around the trash truck. This white truck comes out of nowhere trying to beat me around the trash. And he behind me. I'm going around the truck. He's trying to hurry up and beat me. Before I can go, and he had to, ah! I'm like, dude, is you serious? Like, I immediately got heated. And now I'm finna go into the church gate, and the person that went into it didn't know I was coming behind it, so they closed the gate. Naturally, we close the gate, we come in. So as I'm getting ready to go through the gate, I see the gate closing. So I gotta stop fast again and hurry up and get my clicker to reopen the gate. And the car behind me is that almost hit me. It's like I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing something wrong to them. I'm immediately hot because I'm feeling like, dude, if you hit me, it's going to be a problem because that ain't an accident. That's stupidity. And like, I'm all the way in the flesh now. You know, when you, when you, when you ride in, you still looking back at them. Like, who is this? Who do like, <laughs> I'm, I'm there. I'm mad. <laughs> and then I pull in park and I'm still complaining. My deacon pull out. I'm like, man, did you see that? Then, woo, 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 I'm mad. <laughs> Cornerly minded. And then I open up the text. <laughs> and I see what God was giving me before I ever got to work. <laughs> it says, enjoy your day and allow nothing and no one to ruin it. God was trying to prepare me mentally for what was about to happen so it wouldn't ruin my day. I didn't open the text. <laughs> but because I opened it afterward, it got me back on track. I was like, okay, God, I hear you. Okay, you're right. And I let it go. I'm cool with it now. I'm cool with it. You know what? I forgot. I forgot to pray for that person. Father, bless them. Whatever's going on in their day, maybe they're real anxious or nervous or having personal problems. I pray that you would bless that individual in that little white pickup truck, Lord God, that you would help them, Father God, along their way and draw them closer to you. Help them slow down mentally and enjoy what you've given them rather than being overly rushed or focused on what appears to not go their way. Bless them to be spiritually minded. Send someone to minister truth and encouragement to them as you have to me that the rest of their day will be better than the beginning of their day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, that was obedience. Now, uh, I got three questions. No, two questions. <laughs> you caught that little white pickup joke. <laughs> Pray for me, I'm getting better. <laughs> How do you get spiritually minded about established habits? Oh, spiritually minded about established habits. Uh, you got to begin to stop identifying yourself with that habit. You're not what you do. You're not what you do. Just because you did that, that don't mean you are that. For instance, if I have a habit of eating late at night, and it's a habit, because I've been doing it so long, it's a habit. How do I get spiritually minded by eating late at night? I find scriptures that contradict that. Uh, 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 your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, mortify the deeds of the flesh. Uh, 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 the, the body is not for meat and meat for the body. And, and, blah, 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 blah. And, and, and I find all of these scriptures that encourage that, that 
that helped give me victory over that. For sin should not have dominion over you. And, and, and doing what's best. And I find enough of those scriptures. And I began to confess those scriptures, read those scriptures, and pray those scriptures over myself. See, you got to saturate your mind with something different. Saturate your mind with something different. Saturate your mind with something different. And I've got to saturate it with the word of God and the promises of God. So when that urge is, is going to come up all the time, I've got something to fight it with. Now, another great thing, because you're talking about breaking habits, the best way to break habits is not necessarily to just break habits, but to replace habits, to replace it. So let's say if I eat every night around 930, I get hungry and I start eating. Well, I need to find something else to do every night at 930. Maybe I'll make my scripture reading time or going over those scriptures that I looked up to deal with that habit. Maybe every day at that time, that's when I go over them and I meditate on them and I saturate myself in them and I get my glass of water or my fruit or whatever it is, something different though. And I begin to do it daily. And as I do that consecutively, it will eventually become that habit. So I will have replaced that bad habit with a good habit. And because I'm saturating myself with the word of God, be not transformed, but I mean, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This, this is how I change my mindset. I change my mindset by saturating it with the word of God and what his word says, because the word of God reveals the mind of God. And when he say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, that's how I let this mind be in me, by saturating my mind with this word. But that's how you get spiritually minded about something that was a negative habit. You get the word of God that contradicts that or that, that counters that or that reveals the promise of why you are above that and you have a power and dominion over that and you just continue to reprogram your mind with that word and you replace that habit and you practice it daily, daily, daily. It takes a consistent practice to change your mindset. It, 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 and that's where the problem comes. It's not that it's hard to do, it's that it's tedious because it's not a, a hard thing, it's a tedious thing. You've got to do it consistently over and over and over and over again until it becomes easy. And that's the work that many of us don't like to put in because we really like for God to do everything for us. And that's where this Dominion series will challenge you because religion has taught us to pray and wait on God to work it out. But Dominion is the fact God has worked it out. Tap into what he's given you, apply his principles and do it in Jesus' name. You do it. God is with you. But God don't work for you. He ain't your butler. <laughs> we should be working for him. So the whole Dominion series should be changing your mentality on why does it have to be so hard? What you mean, why does it have to be so hard? It ain't so hard. We just so lazy. All right. I have a question. It's called up in the wind. It's the same as a reprobate mind. Corner mind saying, no, a reprobated mind is when you continue to yield yourself. And you, okay, let me give an example of a reprobated mind. It's that conviction that I ignored for so long. God used to convict me and convict me, and I just would never listen. And I would just keep doing it and doing it and doing it until that conviction becomes less and less and less until I train myself to agree with that ungodly act to where I'm no longer feeling the same level of conviction that I felt about it. I'm no longer struggling with myself to do it. I'm at this yielded state. That's when you get to a reprobated mind. It can be something that God keep telling me not to do. And I just keep doing it and I 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 keep doing it. And I'm doing so long now that I don't even see it as wrong. We see this a lot of times with people who have made their sin, not sin because they want to do it and they've, They've gotten to the way where, no, it ain't really wrong. Like, people do it. I just, you, I'm only using these two because these are two I see it done a lot. I see it done a lot with fornication, and I see it happen a lot with homosexuality. And 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 and, and that's where it's still sin. It's sexual immorality, either, either way you look at it. And I'm not condemning the person. I love love everybody. And, and cause just because my issue may not be your issue, that don't make your issue worse than my issue. 
So it ain't no judgment in that sense. But here's the point about it is when I no longer even view it as sin. So now I don't I don't even want no conviction to even be something I'm working on or I'm trying to get victory over or this and the other. And now I do it without conviction and without this and when I don't even feel the checks of my spirit. Oh, God, and that's because I've been turned over to a reprobated mind. God, like, I'm not going to keep going on with you. I'll let you deal with the consequence. I never forget, uh, there's a quote, Bishop Jones just often uses this quote. Um, there are two pains that we have to choose from. There's the pain there's the pain of discipline, or you can deal with the pain of consequence. <laughs> oh, that's powerful. The pain of discipline or the pain of consequence. Choose. And yes, you can Charles reminded me, I believe in taking deep breaths and, and calming yourself down. Just deep inhale through the nose, releasing it slowly through the mouth. So if you practice deep breathing, it helps to get your mind in check before you do something crazy. Since oxygen to your brain allows you to kind of decompress and think clearly before you just operate on instincts alone. Amen. 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 I got a few announcements. I'm not out of word, but I am out of time. I got a few announcements. Uh, number one, this Friday, y'all. Two days away, the relationship seminar, Am I Qualified for Love? First one I've hosted in over three years. You don't want to miss it. I'm putting the link in the comments now. Dr. Jose Collins, .eventbrite.com. And that's to register for M I. Qualified for love <laughs> relationship seminar. There it is. Go right there. Dr. Jose Collins dot eventbrite dot com. It'll take you straight to the eventbrite link. You can register today. It is absolutely free. But you have to register or you won't get the Zoom link. And you won't be able to get into it because I'm doing it on Zoom. Dr. Jose Collins dot eventbrite dot com. So get on there. Don't miss it. It's going to be this Friday. This Friday at... It's this Friday at 6 p.m. and this Saturday at 11 a.m. It's a two-day event. Now, I've got a special surprise that I announced on last night, and that is we're giving away, because I'm going to be doing prizes and, and free giveaways and things like that. And now we've got some more sponsors. So we're giving away. From P and A events underscore Los Angeles. A good romantic free date night setting. Now, here's what that consists of P and A events is offering decorative palette setups for Valentine's weekend. It is a nice date set up on the beach, and they offer different packages, which include canvases, paint, chocolate-covered strawberries, etc. You can follow them on Facebook for more details at p and a events underscore Los Angeles. I put that in the comments. Oh, my God. That's going to bless your life. That's really, 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 really. Super awesome. Super awesome. I've seen it. You go there and look at the pictures. It's so romantic. It's so lovely. It's so beautiful. And, man, it's better than anything else you could do. And one of our participants is going to win a free one, free of charge. Now, you can go to the site and purchase one of those packages even now. 
because you can't go be crowded up at the restaurants. It's Valentine's Day. You want to do something romantic. This is much better than a restaurant. You can pick what foods you want, how you want to eat. You got, you got, they even got games that you can play with your date. They've got, uh, it's just all, you can paint, you can, you can, everything. I think they even got one package that even got a little glass of wine in it. They got all kind of stuff going on. So you want to go and check p a events underscore Los Angeles. And for those packages, they'll bless your life. And for those that register, for the relationship seminar. Now, this Friday, I'm giving one of those away. They're giving one of those away on Friday, so 6 p.m. So you want to be on? Oh, it's going to be so, so, so awesome. And even it will serve as a great gift. Let's say if you don't need it, but you would like to get your parents out of the house and do something special for them, then you can do that as well. And now also, I've got another, I've got another uh, giveaway. Watch this. Thank God for my lovely sister, Swag, Swag. Sisters with Amazing Grace is blessed to introduce Smooth with Amazing Grace. It's a skincare line by the CEO and her daughter, Dejanae, the CEO, Glenda Fennell, her daughter, Dejanae. They are giving away, it's smooth like butter, baby. <laughs> it is for his and her skincare line gift basket. So one of those is going to be given away. We're giving away some gift cards, all of these great things. So you don't want to miss this free conference. How could you pass by on that? And thank God, last announcement, my lovely wife, whom I'm super proud of, will be hosting a domestic violence workshop on Saturday at 10 a.m. It's an hour-long workshop, and it's the hour before I start the relationship seminar. So this Saturday at 10 a.m., you can go to, I'm going to give it to you, dv.eventbrite.com, dv for domestic violence, .eventbrite.com to register for Voices of Color Domestic Violence workshop. Now, this is Bless Your Life, whether or not you've ever been a victim of domestic violence, or you know someone that has, and you want to be able to help them, and you want to get the information, or you just want to be able to equip your children so they can avoid those situations altogether. Whatever it is, however it blesses you and fits you, take advantage of it. DV Eventbrite dot com amen go there to register there's a minimal fee and many of those proceeds are going to domestic violence organizations to really help in this in our world so definitely take advantage of all of this if you register at dv.eventbrite.com there's also a zoom event my wife will personally email you the zoom uh, 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 link so that you can get right in and just govern yourselves accordingly to all of these announcements. God bless you. That's my time. I'm out of time. So I'll see you next time. Oh, let me get my shout outs in. Who we got? God bless you, Sister Lawanda. Sister Kiara, God bless you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Bless you, Sister Marquita. Praise God. Yes, that is deep, Sister Karen. The pain of discipline or consequence. Sister Talisha, do God bless you, Melissa Hunter. God bless you, Miss Annie. God bless you, Mowo. Sister Yolanda Johnson, Deacon Charles, God bless you. Sister Kendall, catch catching my little white pickup comment. Bless you, Sister Lawanda. Sister Cheryl Bailey, Keisha McDonald, Brother Dice, Brother William, Brother Anthony. God bless you, Marilyn Williams. God bless you, Brother Quaja. God bless you. My sweet loving sugar, Miss Doran M. Collins. God bless you. Sister Yolanda Johnson. God bless you. Melvin Plays. Man, we finna talk right now. God bless you. Dolores Hodge. Bless you, Miss Lisa Red. God bless you, Brother Demetrius. Sister Latoya Jones. Preston Siggy. Bless you. Sister Karen Lewis. Bless you. 
Sister Luanda, Sister Linda, God bless you. Deacon Vincent, bless you. Sister Norma Williams, God bless you. Sister Sharice Jackson, Sheila Jefferson, Johnny Palmer, bless you all. Charlie Wilson Jr., bless you. Laurie Monet, God bless you. Brother Matthew, Sister Maisha, hey, Sister Maisha, God bless you. For I want to wish, I want to take a moment to wish Sister Beverly Hall a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Yes. Yes, she's usually on here right now. So if I don't see her on here as I'm going through the names, please, Sister Maisha, let your auntie know I wish her a happy birthday. Bless God for you. Hall Summit in the house represent. <laughs> Bless you, Kenny Faith. What's happening, dude? Bless you, Matthew Ventress, my cousin. Ken Folk, bless you. Junior Smith, bless you. Audrey Bunner, God bless you. Brother Ade, you blessed me this morning, man. You don't know how bad I needed it. Bless you. There she goes, Sister Beverly Hall. She's on here. Happy birthday to you. Somebody help me wish Sister Beverly Hall a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Love you, sister. God bless you. Linda, praise him. Shamika Calhoun, New Hope represent, Big P, Roderick, bless you, bro. God bless you, everybody. Till the next time, that's my time, because I'm out of time. See you later.